Welcome back everybody to Cypress and Sparrow Homestead. My name is Austin. I'm Sarah. And we are in February and our pantry challenge that we had been doing for the months of January and February are over. We ran out of food so we had to go grocery <laughs> shopping. But we are right around the corner from our garden season starting. Um, well, we'll start planting in probably March, April sometime, so in a few weeks. Well, at least seeds starting. Probably not much will go in the ground besides potatoes. Right, but, yeah. yeah, so seeds starting. So today we thought we would look at our garden plan for 2023. So with that, we're going to jump into the computer and we're going to show you what we got cooking for this season. So this is a overlay of what kind of what our garden looks like. We have 24 four by four boxes and then we have a little patch off to the side and we're actually going to be building some cold frames too and putting that in the garden and trying out the cold frames this year to see how well things grow in those. So this is kind of um, miniature scale of what our garden looks like. So what's the first thing that we're going to grow this year? So we um, are going to be growing some San Marzano tomatoes. Our tomatoes did not do super hot last year. So we're really hoping that they kick it into high gear this year. So we've got a box of um, beefsteak and cherry tomatoes. And then we've got Roma, San Marzano, two boxes of San Marzano, and then another Roma over here, it looks like. So with the tomatoes, especially, we have had a habit of trying to do I think a little trying to get a little too fancy with some of the varieties and and either they don't grow well or we don't actually eat them because they just we just don't like how they taste so we decided this year we're going to keep it simple the basics the san marzano roma the cherry tomatoes which those are actually like the only tomatoes that have consistently done good year over year and then some sort of larger tomato um, whether it's beefsteak or uh, what was the one that we grew last year. The purple one? Not the purple one, not the black beauties. <laughs> no, never the purple ones. Um, I don't remember. Yeah, so some, some larger tomato variety for like sandwiches and stuff like that. But that is what we're gonna be growing for tomatoes this year. And then next, let's see, we got two boxes of onions. Um, our onions grew in 2022, but they were tiny, they're like little, golf ball size onions that were still fine, tasted good, they yeah. worked, but you needed like five of those to <laughs> equate to like one medium sized regular onion that you would get in the store. So yeah, I, I don't know why they didn't grow as well. It's because we did not weed the boxes. That might be why they didn't grow as they well. They were covered with weeds. We did terrible. So we're going to lay down some, some tarp this year or something and plant the bulbs in between it. So so the weeds don't choke them out. Yeah. If you do that in your garden uh, or in your raised beds, if you lay down some sort of weed barrier and then plant in holes in the weed barrier, let me know if it works because I think it will. there's just a lot. So we'll see. But that is the plan. We're going to do two boxes of onions and we'll do a mixture of, I think, a mixture of red, white, and yellow onions. Yep. So. Perfect. Yep, yep. And then next is strawberries. So we planted strawberries in this box last year and we'll just see if they come up again. That one also got a little overrun with weeds and it was kind of yeah. tricky because the strawberries were so little and it was hard to weed it out. But anyway, we will see if they come back. Yeah. And the final one of this row, we have kale. So we have two different kinds of kale here. We have, let's see if I can find it. We have the dwarf Siberian kale, which that we grew a lot of last year. Um, and then we have dino kale, this stuff here. And the dwarf Siberian we use mostly for smoothies, yeah. I would say, because it grows really prolifically. I mean, we had only one box of it last year and it was more than enough to feed us for the summer months as well as store a lot of it and freeze a lot of it for smoothies later on um, in the fall and in the winter. So we're gonna cut back a little bit on that. We're gonna add a little bit more of the dino kale, which is, we like it for like sauteing with some, you know, steak or chicken or whatever. Um, it's a really good sauteed kale. Yeah. Uh, but we grew so much of it last year. So we decided we're only gonna go one box total of kale and that will be plenty for us 
for to eat and to store. So. Yep. Okay, next is jade bush beans. So, um, I don't even remember. Did we grow, how many did we grow last year? So we grew two varieties. We grew the jade bush beans and the blue lake okay. bush beans. And I think the blue lake bush beans were the ones that really grew. Okay. Um, but the jade did fine as well. Um, and they taste good. And that's one thing that we want to, one of the focuses this year of the garden is to try and grow more beans uh, to can and preserve them for later. Yeah, we definitely didn't grow enough to preserve. No. So I think we've got two boxes here, a jade bush bean here and then over on this other side of the garden. Yeah. So. And they're really good, they're tasty, and if you can can them right, nothing like a good old can of beans. <laughs> <laughs> eh, says you, yeah. <laughs> All right, and then we have some carrots. Now, last year we did dulcinea. Is that how you say that? Dulcinea. I, I, I think. Dulcinea carrots. And they grew, and they were wildly average. Um, <laughs> they were kind of pretty small. They grew a bunch of different tentacles and arms <laughs> and stuff. It looked like you were pulling out like a little carrot stick figure. Um, and they tasted fine, I would say. Yeah, better fine. than their first year. Yeah, better than the first year we grew, <laughs> whatever variety that was. But, I don't know. So we're going to try a different variety. If you have a variety, we're in zone four um, that you like and grows well, let us know. But yeah. we're going to try and grow more carrots because that's another one that is super great to can, preserve, um, and freeze. And, and it, it just is really good really versatile with a lot of different recipes so yeah i would like a variety that stores well just like in a root cellar type situation that you don't even have to yeah. prep at all which this this variety i think does store well but yeah we didn't love it so yeah, it does say long storing on there there you go maybe we'll give it another chance but eh, maybe. We'll, we'll add another variety too. yeah yeah and then what's next cauliflower this is the first time we've never grown cauliflower before. Um, we went through a little phase where we we did, liked some like riced cauliflower. If you've ever done that, um, it's kind of like a rice alternative. And yeah, so we're gonna try that. I don't have a ton of high hopes, especially because we're not gonna grow it in mass. So we only right. we'll only probably have a few heads of it. But we're gonna try it, see how it grows here, and uh, should be good though. I like, I don't know, I like cauliflower, I think, more than you do, but... Yeah, no, the rice, it's fine, it's yeah. fine. <laughs> Put a little lime, a little cilantro, some salt, it's basically chipotle in your garden. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Okay, we went over tomatoes, okay, and then hopping over here, we're going to do half a box of garlic, and then half a box of butter crunch and romaine lettuces, so... Huh. We did a full box of garlic last year, I think we still have... White we have a bits. lot of leftovers, which is great. So, so we can replant some of that, um, some of those cloves. But. Yeah. And one thing about the garlic that we have, for whatever reason, it is the easiest gar garlic <laughs> to peel. Um, you just take a clove and you can literally peel it with your hands, which is great in like a second. You just peel off the skin. So yeah. I don't know what kind it was that we got. It was like a special variety from the farmer's market. Yeah. Um, I don't remember what it's called. It grows smaller. Well, again, it was the weeds, I think. I think okay. they got a little choked out. So I think we're gonna do the same thing with this where we have a, a little guitar, what is it called? Uh, weed barrier <laughs> weed or, or landscape <laughs> fabric or whatever. Yeah, so I think we'll try that. Yeah, and then with the butter crunch and the romaine, we just don't eat a ton of salads, but if we do, it's during the summertime. Um, right. And so we, we figured we'd grow a little bit, but Good for Would, BLTs. <laughs> right, exactly. Um, but we didn't want to go crazy with the uh, lettuce, the salad lettuces, just because we don't eat a ton. Of yeah, it, traditionally so. they've a lot of it has gone to birds. Right. Which is fine. Yeah. Bird food, it's good. All right, next zucchini. <laughs> Our first year gardening couldn't grow enough of it. We just had so wait. Couldn't we, grow. We grew way too much. <laughs> that's what I meant to say. We grew way too much. That's like that. We had, I mean, probably hundreds of pounds of zucchini over the course of the whole summer. And last year, we were successfully able to grow one yeah. zucchini, mm. one singular zucchini. All of them died 
um, I don't know if it was disease. I think it was like some root rot. I forget what, or, it, what yeah. it's called or if there's a, there's a certain type of bug that goes after, oh, what is it? It's like a little larva thing uh, that eats the roots. Anyway. A fly. We're gonna, no, we're gonna try to avoid that this year. I think putting tin foil on the base of the plant helps. Mm. And also we have diatomaceous earth, which might help. Yeah, so last year's zucchini was a fail, which is okay. This year, it'll be a success, I hope. Step it up. Next box is jalapenos and celery. So, um, I think celery is mostly just to freeze and put in soups and stuff. Yeah. We don't eat a lot of straight up celery. Um, and then jalapenos, just I think can those, right? I think yeah. that's the goal with those. Yeah, we like pickled jalapenos. Yeah. We like, uh, I like jalapenos for like pico de gallo and making salsas, so. That's another thing. We're gonna try and step up our salsa game this year because it's been kind of weak the last couple of years. So, <laughs> but yeah. yeah. So, and, we, and the peppers are another variety too. We're not gonna go crazy like we have in the past. One, we haven't really had great success with peppers. No. Um, the jalapenos have grown all right, but the bell peppers and and other um, spicy peppers haven't grown that well. Um, so we're gonna try and just go back to the basics and keep it easy, simple and it should hopefully work. Yeah. And then we have broccoli. We eat a lot of broccoli. You're a big broccoli fan, I'm a big broccoli fan, so we have three boxes of broccoli. The one thing I love, so we have, let's see if we can find it here. The one thing I love about broccoli, here we go, calabrese and waltham. waltham. And one is more, it's almost kind of like broccolini, I would say. Mm -hmm. I think it's the Calabrese. No, Waltham. It's the Waltham. Um, is more like kind of long bro broccolini, right? Yeah, I yeah. think. I've never had broccolini. <laughs> but that's kind of what it like, that's that's what it tastes like, it looks like. Um, and then the Calabrese is your typical, what you might find in the store, like a fuller head of broccoli. Oh. Um, but we eat a lot of broccoli, just like the taste. It goes well with a lot of things. So we're gonna be growing three boxes of it this year which is kind of a lot, but it'll definitely get... It's eaten. also not very prolific though. Yeah. So I think three Sometimes it can be, but it grows, it regrows, which is nice too. So you can cut it and it's not one and done. Right. So. All right, next is a basil and dill. We don't have any fun little <laughs> plant icons. <laughs> no graphics for those. Um, but yeah, basil, we, we still have a lot of pesto in the freezer, actually. We yeah. didn't eat as much as we did last year. But basil, we like for pesto. Dill is good for um, cucumbers. Yeah, making the pickles and everything. So, I th is that the only two herbs, herbs that we're growing? I, th I think we'll have a little herb box. A little herb, okay. Elsewhere. Okay. But we also need to put our cucumber. Our cucumbers are going to go in boxes up, up front, yes. I think. Yeah. Which are not on here, but I was like... Yeah. Let's see, we have another bush bean there, and broccoli, and oh, snap peas. Um, snap peas, they're good. Mm -hmm. I like them. They're kind of, they're not the easiest to harvest. Um, they're a lot of work for kind of a little result, but... I like, you really like the taste of them. Yeah, I do like the taste of them, so, um, but usually, you know, spend an afternoon shucking uh, peas and and you get like a little bowl of them, but it's okay. It's it's the uh, it's cathartic. It, yeah, yeah. There, there you go. We'll go with that. So we have the snap peas, um, and then the last box is spinach. And a lot of this, a lot of spinach, I would say, is for smoothies. Um, but you know, you can kind of do anything you want with spinach, which is great. So that is it for our interior garden. And then on the outside, we have our peppers that are going to be in our cold frame. So we're gonna try that. Like I said, we don't haven't had a great success with peppers and I'm yep. wondering if it's, I mean, it could be a variety of reasons, but I think a lot of it maybe is, is just we're in a colder climate and yeah. so they're not growing as well. So we're gonna to try to keep them in the cold frame where hopefully it's a little bit warmer, a little bit more moisture in there too, um, and see how those grow. So, and then what's the last? big box there. This is going to be an addition that we will we'll fence it in. We're going to have our potatoes in there. Um, we just want to grow more potatoes than makes sense to grow on the inside of the garden that will take up like 
at least three boxes. So we're just gonna plant those along with squash. So we're gonna do spaghetti squash, butternut squash, and Hubbard squash. So I think just squash and potatoes go well with our idea of self-sufficiency and they're things that are more calorically dense and you know can be a base of a meal in and of themselves and so yeah we're trying to grow more of those types of things yeah and you said it too we wanted it outside of the garden because they are spreaders and whenever we plant them in the garden they kind of take over other boxes so we're constantly having to to prune them and trim them up and keep them in their space so we're gonna have them in their own separate space fenced off and they should grow well. And one other thing that is not on this because we haven't quite decided yet where it's gonna go, but we are gonna be putting in a blueberry patch. Um, probably 20 to 30 blueberry plants, I think. And that's gonna be another fenced off area there. And we're not gonna get anything this year. We probably won't get anything next year even, um, but hopefully it's just setting ourselves up for future of uh, Lots of blueberries, so because we already have raspberries, we have blackberries, um, we have some wild grapes, and so we wanted to add blueberries to the mix. Yeah. And they grow well here in Wisconsin, unlike some other fruits. Unlike most other fruits. So. <laughs> yeah. So this is the plan for our 2023 garden, and one of the main focuses we have for this upcoming year is to really grow, harvest, and preserve as much food as we can. So we're hoping that uh, this will be enough. And during the summertime, it's nice because we really don't, uh, we don't go to the grocery store for produce. So this, this is a, uh, I think a good, uh, a good plan for this upcoming year. I think so. so. And with some TLC and really staying on top of the weeds, hopefully it'll be successful. So if you want to see the garden expand unfold throughout the year, like I said, we're going to be starting seeds soon. You can go ahead and follow um, and we uh, yeah we're excited for spring because winter time is long long and dull <laughs> and cold and we're excited to get outside we're excited to let the project start again amen all right <laughs> <laughs> my name is austin i'm sarah and this is the cypress and sparrow homestead and we will see you in the next video Peace.